Welcome to the Raised with Jesus podcast, 10 minutes every day with the life of Jesus meets yours. We've got your daily Bible reading for June 20th, 2019, looking again at a portion of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, beginning in verse 8. I say to the unmarried and to widows, that it is good for them if they remain as I am, but if they do not have self-control, they should marry, because it is better to marry than to burn with desire. Next, I commend the married. It is the Lord's command, not mine. A wife is not to leave her husband, but if she does leave, she is to remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband, and a husband is not to divorce his wife. But I, not the Lord, say to the rest, If any brother has an unbelieving wife, and she is willing to go on living with him, he is not to divorce her. If any woman has an unbelieving husband, and he is willing to go on living with her, she is not to divorce her husband. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified in connection with his wife, and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified in connection with her husband. Otherwise your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. But if the unbeliever leaves, let him leave. The brother or the sister is not bound in such cases, and God has called us to live in peace. For how do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? However, each person is to live in the situation that God assigned to him, the situation he was in when God called him to faith. I give this com same command in all the churches. If man was circumcised when he was called, he should not become uncircumcised. If man was uncircumcised when he was called, he should not get circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but keeping God's commands is important. Let each person stay in the calling in which he was called. Were you a slave when you were called? Do not let it bother you. But if you are able to become free, take advantage of it. For the slave who is called to be in the Lord is the Lord's freed person. Likewise, the free person who was called is Christ's slave. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Brothers, let each person remain before God in the situation he was in, when he was called. This is the word of our God. And so last time we talked a little bit about the the two ditches, basically, how one faction here in Corinth was in, in the one ditch of license and um and saying, no, what well, we can do whatever and let's let's celebrate it. And the prime example there is the man who's sleeping with his stepmother. The reaction to that kind of ended up in the ditch on the other side of the road, the opposite ditch, where there seems to have been a reactionary group that said, you know, it's better not to not to have any physical contact whatsoever, even if you're already married. Um, it's better to live as an ascetic or to abstain from sexual relations entirely, um, from even within the, the proper place where God designed it, uh, within the confines of marriage between one man and one woman. And and then <laughs> there's the other question that Paul will take up later in this chapter about, um, you know, should I should I get married or not? But he kind of touches on that, touches on that here as well as um, guidelines for, for acting properly in marriage, and and how we should conduct ourselves really in marriage. And the big idea right through here is that the days are short, the time is short. And we need to be focused. <laughs> um, kind of a strange way of putting it, perhaps. But Paul is saying that the, the days are short, that there will be more distress coming our way um, as the world gets closer to the end of time. And so we need to be focused and we need to be prudent and think about, um, think about how we conduct ourselves and think about the responsibilities that we take on. Um, but with the overall goal of not not falling into um, falling into sin and not being you know subjecting ourselves to temptation and kind of with that in the background um, he kind of breaks out his his advice to these different groups verses 8 and 9 I say to the unmarried and the widows that it is good for them if they remain as I am but if they do not have self-control they should marry it is better to marry than to burn with desire and basically the same idea. 
that your position in life or whether you're if you're unmarried or if you are or if you've been widowed or a widower um, that's not a bad place you're not <laughs> you're not being deprived of anything and God loves you just as much and um, and that that life as a single person will provide many opportunities in service to God you don't have to change your change your status, change your position, change your relationship in order to have an opportunity to serve the Lord. But Paul does recognize that, you know, especially if, you know, if there's this temptation, um, the burning with desire that he talks about, then it is definitely better to marry because that is the proper place for, uh, for sexual urges to find their, their proper fulfillment, um, between, the marriage relationship of a husband and wife it's better to marry than to than to burn with desire um, and in all of it we seek to honor the Lord and glorify the Lord and then verses uh, 10 and 11 when he says next I command the married and this is the Lord's command not mine um, not to divorce and if there is a divorce then either to remain remain separated or be reconciled and when he says, it is the Lord's command, not mine, Paul isn't, all he's saying here is that Jesus has already talked about this in, you know, like Matthew chapter 19. Um, Jesus has already talked about this. He's not trying to divide a line and say, oh, by the way, Corinthians, um, this part is God t talking through me. And then this next part is actually just my own personal opinion. You can take it or leave it. Um, he's saying, well, Jesus already covered this in, in the gospel of Matthew. It's better to, um, it's, it's, divorce isn't really on the table as an option. And we are to, we are to honor the Lord as we serve our spouse. Um, then verse 12 and following, um, but I, not the Lord, say to the rest, if any brother has an unbelieving wife and she is willing to go on living with him, he is not to divorce her. Uh, for the unbelieving husband has been sanctified in connection with his wife. I believe my wife has been sanctified in connection with her husband. And what we're talking about here is the exact same idea of um, asceticism and seeking to serve God by deprivation of, of the responsibilities and vocations that I have in this life. In this particular case, when he's talking about, um, he uses this word sanctified in verse 14. Unbelieving husband sanctified in connection with his wife. Unbelieving wife has been sanctified in connection with her husband. And and what we see here is that, you know, Paul is saying, or these people were saying perhaps, and Paul is responding, that I can't really spend time with my unbelieving spouse because they're distracting me from my devotion to the Lord. Or or that perhaps somehow my unbelieving spouse is is being a drag on my own Christianity. And, and, you know, a pious thought, perhaps, uh, very uninformed, obviously, that they had to somehow leave that marriage relationship with an unbeliever in order to serve God completely and fully and wholeheartedly. But as it is, you know, he talks about this a little bit later, feels like you're being pulled in two directions. And he, he goes on to correct that thought, that um, as long as the spouse is willing to live with you, you know, continue the marriage relationship, then don't divorce them, obviously. But if the unbeliever leaves, let him or her leave, you know? Um, that mar the essence of marriage is one man and one woman committed together for life. It's, and freely, right? And it's not tied up in Christianity. The essence of marriage applies to every person of all time because Jesus, or because God designed us to be male and female, and he instituted it on the sixth day of creation, um, in that, in the perfection of the sixth day of creation. And so marriage itself applies to all people. It doesn't have to be a Christian marriage between two Christian people in order to be valid. Um, even the marriage of two unbelievers has blessings to it and can be a valid marriage or is a valid marriage and so paul says number one your worship is not being impeded by being married to an unbelieving spouse rather that spouse is um <laughs> is kind of made holy but using the image of um 
of sacrifices. Because what he, he goes on to say in verse verse 16, and he makes it apparent that that these children and this unbelieving spouse are still unbelievers. But the thought that he has here is cleanness and uncleanness, which is the exact thought that he kind of talks to, that according to the ceremonial law, if someone was unclean, say, you know, a woman is on her, her monthly cycle, she is unclean, and then whatever she touches becomes unclean, and then any person who touches what she touched also becomes unclean. And then the purification has to happen by, like, um, you know, breaking the jar or cleansing the house or going to offer some sacrifice at the end of, at the end of that period of time. Because the ceremonial law kind of taught that uncleanness creates more uncleanness. And so the Corinthians are thinking to themselves, um, what's going on? What should I do here? Especially the Jewish Christians, I'm sure. Um, and Paul says, well, it doesn't work that way anymore. Because that was an image of our continuing sinfulness before the Lord, and that we can't make ourselves clean or keep ourselves clean. But he says that now in Christ, in Christ it is the one who makes clean. Because even just consider the, the miracles of Jesus, where he touches the people with leprosy. They ought to be making him unclean, but he is the one who makes them clean, um, both ceremonially and also physically where the dead people, you know, if you touch a dead body, then you are unclean for seven days. But Jesus goes to the dead body, touches it, and raises up Jairus' daughter, or the, the widow's son at Nain. That Jesus is the one who makes clean, and Paul says that's, that's more the image for you to have in mind. That you, as the believing Christian spouse, are the one who, in a sense, makes the unbeliever clean. Not that you make them acceptable to God or make them make them believers, but don't get all caught up in this this notion of cleanness and uncleanness as though it's a bad relationship for you to be in. Um, no, not at all. Live in peace. Um, verse fifteen: If they if that unbeliever leaves, let him or her do so. Um, sometimes called malicious desertion, but you know Christians don't do anything maliciously, but what we're talking about here is marriage is a free commitment between one man and one woman publicly. That commitment is made publicly, and it's a lifelong commitment. And if one spouse is unwilling to uphold part of their part of that commitment, um, then the marriage is dissolved, or it it is free to be dissolved, because the unbelieving, the the believer is not bound in such circumstances. And we'll kind of pick it up in verse verse 17 tomorrow. As you can tell, this is maybe a little bit of a, a deeper section that takes a little bit more explanation and, and discussion because Paul has a lot of good things to say here. and But it takes a little bit to, to kind of unravel and apply. And so what he says is that if you are single and you are t totally content being sing single, then praise the Lord and and go on living that way. If you want to marry, you're free to do so. If you are married, then continue to honor, serve, respect, and love your spouse. Um, and even if that spouse is an unbeliever, and First Peter talks about that a little bit more as well, First Peter chapter 3, I believe. And if you are married to an unbeliever, and that unbeliever you know, decides to leave, um, you're free because... Because marriage is that free consent between one man and one woman publicly made, and it's a lifelong thing. And so Paul says, just make sure that you look at your marriage and look at your life with clear eyes. That you understand the, the duties, responsibilities of each area of life. And that you seek to serve the Lord by serving others in those. You can find us Sunday mornings at 2250 South Holland Savania Road in Maumee. You could also follow us on Facebook. Just search for Resurrection Maumee. God bless your day.